Hey, it's Jennifer with Pigskins and Pigtails. On my channel, I share videos about how to screen print with vinyl. Today, I want to show you how to make screen print transfers, specifically plastisol screen print transfers. Transfers have become a popular way for many people to get started selling t-shirts and apparel without a huge startup cost. You can order pre-made transfers or even ones with your own custom design. They arrive in the mail and you heat press them on your shirt. It's a really easy way to get an apparel business started. I've shared about Supacolor transfers, which were more of a digital transfer, and these are great when you need a full color design. But you have probably also heard about screen print transfers, and these transfers are made with Plastisol screen printing ink. The design is screen printed on a special paper instead of directly on a shirt. This paper is then treated so it's dry and you can save these for later. When you're ready, you put the transfer on your shirt and heat press it. The heat transfers the Plastisol ink on the shirt permanently. The shirt now has screen printing ink on it, just as if you had printed directly on the shirt. You know I'm a DIYer, so today I want to show you how Plastisol transfers are made. But first, I want to mention that this process I'm about to show you is not the absolute best, most professional way to do it. I've just found a way that works for me. If you want to make transfers to sell, a conveyor dryer is a better piece of equipment to use. I don't have one of those in my craft room, so I'm going to be showing you how I did it with a flash dryer. The drying process is key to making these transfers work, so you're going to want to do some testing to make sure your settings are perfected. As usual, my first step is cutting the design on vinyl using my vinyl cutter. I've weeded the design and placing transfer tape on it so that I can stick it to my screen printing frame. Usually I mirror my design so I can put it on the back of my screen printing frame. This time I did not mirror it. I'm still going to put it on the back of my frame, but I want the design to print in reverse on my paper so that when I flip it over to press it on the shirt, it will be the right direction. I am using my screen printing press and Plastisol heat transfer paper. I'll link to these supplies below. And this is Effin ink, which is a Plastisol ink. This is different from my usual water-based inks. I print the design on the transfer paper, and then I take the paper with wet ink and go straight to my table where I'm going to spread transfer adhesion powder over the wet ink. I just move it back and forth until the powder has covered all of the ink. Now I have my flash dryer turned on and I'm going to use a temperature gun to monitor the heat. I want to heat the ink to 200 degrees, and because my flash dryer tends to heat in the middle of the paper quicker than the outsides, I'm carefully turning the paper to make sure all of the design is what you call gelled. This isn't fully cured, but it is going to be dry enough to be able to stack these sheets. You can store these sheets or take them with you to an event. When you're ready to press them on your shirt, set your heat press to 350 degrees and flip the paper over so the ink side is touching the shirt. Then we're going to press for 10 seconds and just peel the paper off. And just like that, you have applied a screen print transfer to your shirt. So you might be wondering, why do I go to all the trouble of printing on transfer instead of just printing directly on the shirt? This is a process I would use if I had an event where I wanted to sell shirts, but I didn't know how many of each size or color I would sell. Instead of taking a huge inventory of printed shirts, I can take these and press them on the spot as people order them. That way, if you have leftover shirts at the end of the event, they would be blank and you could use them for something else. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how screen print transfers are made. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this.